For question number seven, we're given two cars that are moving westward along a straight highway. So for us, we've got car A and car B, and they're traveling westward, so we'll say that the positive direction is that way. Car A is moving at a constant velocity of 85 kilometers per hour and car B is going at a velocity of 115 kilometers per hour. And first things first, they want us to find how much sooner the faster car or car B arrives at a destination 16 kilometers away. So for our givens, we have the velocity of A, which is 85 kilometers per hour, the velocity of B, which is 115 kilometers per hour, the change in X, which is 16 kilometers, and using this we're going to be able to solve the problem. So our unknown is the change in time. And the equation we're going to use is actually from the previous unit since they're both going at constant velocities. So we have x final is equal to x initial plus v times the change in time. The x initial in both of them is zero so we can cross that out and what we're trying to solve for is time. So for both of these cars we can just do x final divided by their velocity to equal the time. And when we calculate that out, so we substitute in 16 kilometers divided by both the 85 kilometers per hour and the 16 kilometers divided by 115 kilometers per hour obviously this car is the faster of the two and is going to have a smaller time so in order to find the time difference we're actually going to take the one that's going to be a larger number right over here and subtract this number now the answer that you're going to end up with is going to be in hours and for both of these they end up with decimals so this one ends up and this is having rounded it 0.188 hours and this one ends up with 0.139 hours and when you subtract these you get about 0.049 hours now no one is going to know what 0.049 hours actually is. It's such a strange term no one's going to be able to recognize it. So what you're going to have to do is convert it into seconds. So what I'm going to do is the dimensional analysis from earlier and once again I'm writing slanted that looks like but for every one hour there are 60 minutes. For every one minute there are 60 seconds and you don't actually have to write all this out all you have to remember is if you multiply whatever you have in hours by 3600 you're going to get it in seconds and the answer you get from just doing dimensional analysis from the rounded number is 176.4 seconds however if you don't round the numbers if you save them in your calculator like I was telling you to earlier you're going to end up with the 176.78 seconds as your change in time for the final solution. And the whole point of this problem is to kind of show you how you can take multiple equations and relate them even if they're for different objects. And part B of this problem is actually really showing us this because it's asking us how far the cars have to travel for the faster car to arrive 15 minutes before the slower car. 
So once again, we've got similar givens, though we don't have a change in x. We're actually trying to find the change in x. And instead, our given is that the time for A minus the time for B, or the longer time minus the shorter time, is going to be a quarter of an hour. And the reason I wrote that instead of 15 minutes is because both of their velocities are in terms of hours. So therefore, our minutes have to be in terms of hours, and 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour. And our unknown, in this case, is the change in x. So for our equation, once again, we're going to use the same equation, but we're going to change it up a little bit. Now we're looking to see when the x final is technically the same for both cars even though they're going to be having different times. So what we can actually do is by using the transitive property or A is equal to B and B is equal to C then A is equal to C that sort of thing. If the velocity of car A and the change in time for car A is equal to the final x position. And that final x position is also equal to velocity B times the change in time for B. Then these two are actually the same. So what we can do is combine. So it's velocity A times change in time A is equal to velocity B times change in time b and the way we're actually going to substitute this in because now we're on the substitute what we're trying to find in this equation since we no longer have the change in x we're trying to find the time that it takes to get to that position for either one of the cars and then we're going to plug that back into that cars velocity equation in order to get the correct answer so for velocity A, we've got 85 kilometers per hour. And for the time, we actually have the change in time for B plus a quarter of an hour. And that is just because, and that is just because we want car B to arrive at the location a quarter of an hour before car A does so we can just add a quarter of an hour to car B's time in order to get the time for car A. Hope you guys could follow that. And then we can plug in the values for car B so 115 kilometers per hour times the change in time for car B. So what we can end up doing is distribute that and that. So we have 85 kilometers per hour times the change in time for car B plus 21.25 kilometers is equal two and I'm running out of room here on the side bear with me is equal to 115 kilometers per hour times the change in time for B and what we can do is subtract this term to the other side and what we're left with is 21.25 kilometers is equal to 30 kilometers per hour times the change in time for B. From here, if we were to divide by 30 on both sides, what we're left with is 21.25 kilometers divided by 
30 kilometers per hour as the change in time for car B. And that 21.25 divided by 30 is approximately 0 0.71 hours. And I'm just going to save that in my calculator like you guys should be doing because it's not exactly that we want to get as precise of an answer as we possibly can. And since that's the time for car B, or the faster car, we then just have to plug that time into this equation in order to find the change in x that is needed. So we've got its velocity times the amount of time taken and what we're left with is the change in x or the solution for this problem which is 81.46 kilometers alrighty so I hope I kept you there through the entire transitive property thing if you were to understand that and also the part about adding the quarter of an hour to the time if you understood that, then you got the gist of the problem. This is just to show you how you can take, once again, you can take multiple objects, use their equations together to find how they interact. And you're going to be using that skill throughout the rest of this course in physics. Alrighty, so if you didn't understand any of that, Remember, just go to our website and fill out something on the Contact Us page or leave a comment on this video on YouTube or send us an email at bestudios.physics at gmail.com. And now we're just going to move on to question number eight. In question number eight, we're going to kind of cover the transitive property using these equations again. However, this time we're going to have one object going at a constant motion and one that is accelerating from rest. So, in this problem we have a police officer and a speeder. And the police officer is starting at rest. And the speeder passes the police officer going at a certain velocity. And what happens is the police officer has to accelerate to try to overtake the speeder. So our positive direction is going to be this way. And for our givens, we know that the velocity of the speeder is 30 meters per second. The initial velocity of the police car is 0 meters per second. And the acceleration of the police car is 2.44 meters per second squared. The first part of this problem asks us how much time passes before the police car overtakes the speeder. So in this case, our unknown is going to be the change in time. And the equations that we're going to use are x final is equal to x initial plus v average times the change in time for the speeder and for the cop we're going to use x final is equal to x initial plus the initial velocity times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared now we can cross that out and cross that out and that out because we're going to say they both start at the x position of zero and the initial velocity of the cop is zero so that would cause that term to be zero and not have anything to do in this problem. From here we're going to uh, use the transitive property and combine both of these problems together using the x finals. So we end up with velocity times the change in time is equal to one half the acceleration times the change in time squared. Now if we were to divide by time on both sides, we would have the velocity of the speeder is equal to one half the acceleration of the police car times just the change in time because 
uh, the squared ends up canceling out. From here, all we have to do is multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 1 half. So we have 2 of the velocity of the speeder divided by the acceleration of the police car is equal to the change in time. From here, all we have to do is substitute in. So we have 2 times 30 meters per second divided by 2.44 meters per second squared. And the answer that that gives us is 24.59 seconds as the amount of time that it takes for the police car to overtake the speeder. The second part of the problem asks us how far the speeder gets before he's overtaken by the police car. And all we have to do is take this time that we just found and plug it into the speeder's equation. So what we can do is x final is equal to his velocity which is 30 meters per second times 24.59 seconds as the substitution and the solution that we get from that is 737.7 meters as the distance that the speeder gets from the police car. So this is also showing you how the transitive property can be used in these equations even if the equation isn't the same so you can find how they're interacting. So we're just going to keep on moving to question number nine.